the DJI Air 2S. In this first impression video, I'm gonna unbox this little baby, let you know my thoughts as to how it flies and whether or not it's worth your money. And here it is, the DJI Air 2S. It's a very hefty box that is surprisingly heavy. Inside of it, you've got, you guessed it, a bag. Yep, but in that bag, there's gonna be a drone. So let's get this little sucker out. It's a little bit stuck in here. On the, on the bottom bit, you've got a box and it's got like one of a few several warnings about, hey, don't be a fool. Uh, basically, there's not a lot of information here. So you guys have go and download the instruction manual. Yep. There was a castle one in there. Yeah, you, you, the, enough of that. We've got a lot of different propellers here to replace them just in case they should ever break. And inside of this little box are some ND filters. Very handy for conditions where you want to definitely capture a bit more shadow detail whilst you've got some highlights. You've got a spare pair of joysticks as well as USB-C and micro USB cables for the controller to your phone. To charge the controller, you're gonna need this USB-A to USB-C cable. But now, let's get into the bag proper. At the front, you've got a little tiny pocket that's extremely hard to get into. Got a little tag on the side there, which you're gonna rip off, aren't you? And, well, here we are. The exciting stuff, folks. First up, the drone. And on this little bad sucker, you've got a lot of stickers everywhere and I mean in really awkward awkward places and setting the top arms out first and then the bottom legs but this drone is not yet ready to go taking off the protective lens cover you've got your Sony CMOS one inch sensor and again more tape on one side of the drone, you've got a micro USB input. On the other side, not seen here, a place in which you can transfer data from the drone. Looking around the drone, on the bottom, you've got a light as well as some sensors to help with landing. And on the rear, you've got two more sensors. And in the front, not two, but four sensors. This sturdy controller, now operating on OcuSync 2.0, can transmit up to 160 megabits per second. Simple layout, you've got return to home, different speeds from slow, normal to fast, and power on and off. On the top, you've got your dial to move your camera up and down, to record and stop or take a photograph. And this is the antenna system, which is where your mobile phone will sit. Nested in that space is where your cable goes. At the moment, it's got a USB to lightning connector. And to complete the picture, just attach the joysticks and you're almost ready to go. Just a few more items from the bag and in this larger box, you've got a few more batteries and the charging hardware. These 3,500 milliamp hour lithium phosphate batteries are smart and if you charge them to 100% full, they'll naturally actually degrade themselves to 50% to protect themselves. This adapter allows you to charge USB devices from the batteries and the 38 watt charger enables consecutive charging of the batteries as well as a USB device like the controller. In the bottom of the bag you got a foam piece to help keep the drone in place and now let's talk about props because I actually had trouble putting these on so here's my learnings. Matching orange rotor to orange motor, push them down and turn until they lock in place. But what I found works best is you push it down and you rotate the motor in place like this. Before going out flying, make sure your batteries are charged. So to turn it on, press the button once and then press and hold for several seconds until you get that infamous DJI sound. Ensure your firmware is up to date and then you're ready to fly.
Hey, how you going? And this is where I really regret having pressed stop on the um, B-roll camera, not realizing that on the mobile phone, there's also another issue here which I wasn't aware of. What happened? Well, a lady came over, a concerned mother, shall we say, who basically said this, uh, what are you doing and why are you using that drone here? To which I answered, uh, I'm actually allowed to use the drone here and um, yep, and I tried to show her the screen. She goes, yes, but you're near the playground. And she, she, she basically just said it like that, like a pregnant pause as to, well, so I'm not actually looking at the playground, am I? So I basically said to her, I'm actually here shooting out on the lake and getting some footage in that direction and I'm not going to be going anywhere near the playground. And again, I tried to show her the camera, but she wasn't interested. And then she goes, but you can see the problem, can't you? And I said, no, because I can't see the playground. And again, I wanted to show her that this is, you know, what I can see and no amount of zooming is going to enable me to go look at that playground because I'm not that sort of creep. And it's kind of perplexing that one, she didn't trust what I was saying, two, didn't want to actually look at what I was showing her, and three, giving me the opportunity to say to her, and which I wish I probably should have said this, was that I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to fly over people. I'm going to keep at least 30 meters distance and I'm not about to go do that. But what I did say was that I too have got some kids over there right now and I'm not planning on filming anything around that playground. This is the first experience I've ever had of someone coming up to me and complaining about drone use. Since then, I've flown at least three, four more times and several people have come up to me saying, wow, what is that? That looks really awesome. Oh my God, the picture quality is great. They're excited for it and uh, they're curious as to what it looks like. But with this lady, her perception of, as to how powerful that um, uh, digital zoom is, if she had just taken a look at the screen, she could have seen that well, the playground wasn't visible. Two, if I'd zoomed, I couldn't see anyone. And if you could see any faces, they would have just been a muddy, muddy mess. So, oh gosh. Next time, how I'm going to address this is this. On the app, you can cache to the, um, your, you know, the footage that is being captured in 1080p on your mobile phone. But it doesn't actually capture, um, you know, what's actually on screen. So any of the button inputs or what the settings are and all that sort of stuff. Nor does it capture audio. So my top tip is this. If you haven't got the opportunity to have a second B-roll camera, that is to say another camera that's pointing towards you or maybe around your surroundings, like I've seen other um, YouTubers use, use screen record on your mobile phone. Hey. Yeah, awesome. It's awesome. Yeah? That way, you're going to be capturing your audio and you can get the video as to what the camera is seeing and, you know, let's pretend worst case scenario, it goes plonk somewhere in where it shouldn't go. It's going to help you actually, I think, navigate to that point a lot easier. I think. <laughs> I'd never want to find that out. I did take out uh, insurance with DJI on this so that if ever something were to go wrong I could get two refurbished replacements per year um, that's like 170 bucks folks um, but yeah I think a top tip is mm, have someone there my father was there and he witnessed the exchange and he was very surprised by it and to yeah have a way in which to record yourself just in case she goes to the authorities to complain about me if she had done so, they could, there's nothing for her to stand on because I could have shared my entire footage and she would have seen that, yeah, I did, went nowhere near it. There was, there, it's very annoying. So with that really miserable experience out the way, the trip continued and I went and got a bit more footage.
And on the way home, I was hoping to get some more using the master shots and follow track, but unfortunately the weather turned foul. So I went and got this footage the next day using the screen catcher on my mobile phone instead. So there you have it. Hopefully this has been something you've found useful and uh, in future I will be doing a review on this after I've flown it for you know, at least half a dozen more times, had about maybe about a month with it and learnt all the pros and cons. Um, so far, very happy with my purchase. I said to people previously that sometimes when I buy things for you know YouTube, you know cameras, microphones, whatever it might be, as soon as I've done so, and particularly as it might be an expensive purchase like this one, I tend to have buyer's regret. But when I purchased this, you know, I didn't actually feel that way at all. In fact, I was very pleased with buying it because for so long, I've wanted to integrate more drone footage into my videos, but either the opportunity wasn't there or conversely the quality wasn't there, the camera's ability or, no, or the software that's built into this to be able to track things hasn't been available either. And as a one person operator, like I am with YouTube, it's just me filming. I have to set my tripod up, I have to get the shot set up and then I film it and then I review it. It's time consuming, it's slow. And I can't have someone um, be driving either the car or taking a scooter or riding a bike, whatever the subject might be. I can't actually uh, do that. It's got to be me. So by putting this into a place where it's safe to fly, free of obstacles, and I can just trust that it's going to follow me like it did with the car uh, or, you know, pull together half a dozen, eight different shots. That is super powerful. And it, in the end, it's going to pay for itself, I figure. So, so far, very happy. If you're debating about whether or not to get it, um, I suggest get it. It's definitely uh, a, a good quality product so far. The app is awesome. The hardware is awesome. Um, the image quality is great, but I need a lot more time and experience with it to give you that definitive answer because so far from what I can see, well, it looks good, but yeah, it was overcast. It was nothing special. I didn't have any of the ND filters on and I know I can actually get better footage with better lighting conditions. So if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Uh, leave me a little comment if you've got any questions. I do look at them. Uh, if you wanted to support the channel, consider joining us over here. Otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be great.